Hey guys, I see a lot of people going on about the consumerist aspect of Christmas and there's this internet uh, thing that goes around about Satan and Santa because they have the same letters in their name and so they say Satan and he comes down the chimney into the... and I've been through this in my younger life and I, I believe this stuff, this nonsense that I'd read as well. And I think you have to understand the... I'm not contesting that Christmas has been lost to a, a horrid message of consumerism, but I want to just dig into that very quickly and see what I see is when people are like that, they miss out. They miss out hugely on something beautiful. And why that happens is quite simply the following. <laughs> so when people focus on Christmas like that and they see the negative aspect, they see people surrendering their sel themselves to material goods from this reality, basically, then it stirs something very negative in some people and they get very upset and they also feel that children are kind of being enslaved into that material desire, love materiality instead of loving the spirit. Now, that concept's all well and done, but you know, spirituality and physicality are also human concepts. They uh, don't exist in reality. They only come from our mind. We, we conceptualize and, and create these labels to describe a certain modality of approaching life. And we deem those beings that are not seen within this world to be of spirit. And this is how we label it. But it's absolutely true that the experience we face would be be useless without both present so it's not that it's fully always evil to be looking upon consumerism and material goods because it's just not the case now I agree that it's lost at this point and that we are and I, I've been through all these motions myself as a human being and I still do to some degree I feel a want to express my love to my family and I feel uh, this connection between my love and my family and then there's this side road I can take which is consumerist items to show hey I love you I bought this and I put some thought into it for you now there's actually no harm in getting somebody a gift that you put some thought into it there is harm in what we do to children where we buy them plastic bric-a-brac that they get bored of and gets put in a box out of the way in the cupboard and they very rarely touch it doesn't fulfill them, but we lead them up to Christmas, allowing them to believe that it will fulfill them. And that's where the crime begins. That's where the problem comes with a consumerist focused Christmas and Santa Claus. However, what you need to do is come back to where the origin is coming from. Any parent going out there to buy gifts for their child, even if they are not fully aware of themselves doing that, their organic foundation for what they're doing is they want to show something to want to show their love and they want to make their child or loved one happy that's the core of why people are going out to do things originally now however once you spend a few Christmases as an adult it often can become habituation and you'll see it in the gifts that are bought such as a aerosol gift set you know deodorant for the body in a Christmas box there is some sentiment there to want to get something for someone, but in the most part, we know that that's a habituatedly bought gift. You've bought it without thinking about it, without putting any effort in. It's a generic gift unless the person asked for it, which is a generic gift from the supermarket, from the consumerist sphere, and you've habitually gotten it because you feel obligated to get. And that's where we head into a problem. Likewise, when we feel we must pile up presents for our children, we are going into a habituated problem. So if you can come at it with fresh eyes, then you realize that what you're trying to do is something wonderful. You're trying to organically share something that says you're loved and you're loved at this time of the year, which doesn't matter so much these days in, in the developed world, but that time of the year, dead of winter, where a lot of people are dying, where we have just turned the corner and we're finally heading into the spring and we know that the, that the reprieve from the harshness of what we've just faced is coming. That's where this originally comes from, the solstice. Now, 
This is also a Christian celebration. Now they've moved the birth of Jesus to match solstice. And they've done so, and I've covered this with my crucifixion videos, with good reason why they chose that date. And also to realize that humans, when Christianity was being brought upon them, were habituated into certain celebrations, and that was indeed the winter solstice, an important celebration. And Christianity decided that they would join in with that to try and influence that already set habit of holiday time for people, that set habit of of loving and giving and sharing and celebrating and introduce Christ's message with that because we know Christ was not born on December 25th. It's how it happened, it's just historically what happened. Now all I want to say here is in the same way that Christianity wanted to try and adopt the existing celebrations of the time. Now I'm not totally and utterly uh, opposed to all pagan persons for this record because I've met some very loving ones. However, at the time where Christianity was trying to bring itself, for instance, my ancestors uh, were following and uh, worshipping Odin. And they were involved in a lot of horrific as well as a lot of stuff that's not heard of that was very deeply profoundly loving and family orientated but there was a lot of horrific and strange ceremonies going on and, and sex magic beliefs etc and we know how much that can pollute a society we know that it's not cool to just go rob steal what you want but also certain excuse me also certain gods uh, have that belief with inside the the viking sphere so they were trying to bring something in for a better change. And that's likewise when they went to Africa. If you look at Livingston, one of the first missions in Tanzania, he spoke of the tribes were cannibalistic and even eating the firstborn baby of marriages until he brought that. Now coming in, if they too were celebrating a celebration of solstice, which they were not because they weren't far enough north for that to matter, then it would make sense to put that in to the, the already habituated time that people are celebrating to try and get that loving message that Christ carried into it. And that's what happened in Europe. That's why it was done that way. It also ties in with the Greek uh, uh, aspect of the fact that the word Jesus means son in Greek. His name was Yeshua, not Jesus. So that ties in with another video. But it's still a want to try and bring a different formality to uh, to humanity and it's not how humanities took that and used it that you look at it's it's what the message was supposed to be so you look at jesus the message is clearly not about control and slavery and and oppression it's a, a, and 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 all of those negative things that many people focus on with christianity in this day it's about love. It's about caring and sharing with your neighbor and the highest form of religion to, to, to visit and care for the widows and orphans, as it said. Basically, to be charitable, you know, to do greater works than Christ, as he said. And the message is love, to care, to live peacefully, to turn your back on immorality and sin as they label it. Now, when it says sin, it's referring to things that, that make you divulge in the flesh, make you go away from the spirit, not the modern day connotations of sin that you have these people on the street calling everybody names and oppressing minority groups constantly in the name of a loving father. That's not what you should think of. Think of the core message. Likewise, when you move to the Christmas message, look at the core message. The people are trying to share love, even if they are diverted on this bypass of consumerism, they're trying to share love. And even Santa Claus himself, Santa Claus was Santa Claus, and it or, its origins are in Amsterdam. And that originates from a Turkish saint, Saint Nicholas, or Saint Nicolaus, as they say where I am now. And he died on the 6th of December. On the 6th of December in Germany, they put a shoe outside and they received some uh, some gifts of some sort from St. Nicholas or from Santa Claus or Santa Claus as it was changed. Santa Claus was, there's lots of urban myths, Coca-Cola made him red and it's Coca-Cola did not make him red, he was depicted as red when he was St. Nicholas. And the reason he was St. Nicholas and celebrated as St. Nicholas is he was a wealthy 
man from a wealthy family and lost both of his parents as a child. The pain he endured as a child made him want to help children to not endure the same pain. And he, he did good deeds and that's why he became a saint. He was also a bit of a renegade. He punched somebody in the face at the Council of Nicaea so as he could get his passion through to them. And it's not a very Christian thing to do, but it's a passionate man who'd already shown his worth and men are not perfect. The celebration of who Santa Claus can be for you can be totally different. If you think Santa Claus is a consumerist Satan who's coming to harm, then the existing habituated celebration is already there. And if you want to change it, shouting from the sidelines that that's wrong whilst people are involved and in their origin of what they're doing, they feel, I'm trying to share a loving gift with my family and you're telling me that I'm, you know, that it's this, that and the other. It doesn't work. It will never work. But what does work is if you go into the celebration as Christianity tried to do by making the birth of Jesus the solstice, you go into the, the existing celebration and you look at what's going on. And you see that parents are using this concept of Santa Claus or a Christ child they have in Europe as well, delivering gifts for children and for others too. Now, if you tell your children, well, the reason Santa Claus is celebrated, it was a very rich man who got hurt many years ago and he wanted to make sure no other children got hurt. Then at the same time, you can start looking at what you actually gift people. And I'm not going to direct you straight to us, but I've said it this year with the Christmas crackers in the recent video, just simple changes. Everybody's ranting at the wealthy to give up their, you know, their Bentleys and their Bugattis and their mansions. But to a poor child who's laboring, you giving up your Christmas, Christmas crackers is akin. If they're shouting that at you, how would you hear that? And a lot of people are totally opposed to it, but they still yell and shout at the wealthy. But if you can start showing children in your family, even if the parents themselves are very consumerist focused and don't get it, if you start sharing with them something of meaning, something of worth, you share something of beauty, of education with them, something homemade, something from the heart, a pledge to spend more time, a pledge to make a trip, a pilgrimage with somebody you love, Alter it in your favor to what you know to be the truth and the reality of things. And try to break the habit that people have gotten into. Because habit in itself, not the habits, but habit is a monstrous, monstrous demon to tackle for humanity. You know, habit is horrific. And I'm going to do a video about habit and health um, in the coming week. But just see that you can reach in and you can change it. You can gift a child in the instance of our charity this was not a sales pitch you can do it with many charities you could adopt a dog an elephant whatever something beautiful for our our world you can say to a loved one hey you know what this year i don't want any gifts will you just sponsor a child and i'm making that sacrifice and let it be known at the christmas dinner table people won't look down their nose at you they'll hear it you know, remind your family to give thanks at the beginning of their meal this Christmas. Many do not. They just start shoveling the food in. Especially those who are consuming uh, animals who have given their life to sustain theirs. You know, they should give thanks, but many do not. My son is one and a half, and he already does this before a meal. Of course, he doesn't know what he's doing, but he can see us giving thanks. So he started to mimic it already, and sometimes he even reminds me when I'm hungry, you know. That's why Jews have it good where they thank after the meal. It's probably wise if you're hungry. But anyway, I think you guessed what I'm saying. Make Christmas something beautiful. If you keep generating inside you, it's horrible, it's evil, it's satanic. You're doing it to yourself, you know. There's no need for it. So take it in and say, oh man, the consumer's message is all messed up. Let me try and change that somehow. Let me gift my family something that matters. Let me stay inside this tradition that we hold, which or originates in a form of wanting to love one another. And let's, let's look at a way that I can adapt that. This year, we do advent calendars in Europe, where every day you get a chocolate or a, a little something or other. And Fritzi got me one with uh, organic soap and things, and I got one uh, with seeds so fritzy's family where every day they open something that they can plant and grow i adapted 
uh, very meaningless consumerist behavior that it had turned into into something beautiful, generating food and medicine uh, and life for the planet. This is what we should do. If we are opposed to something, we shouldn't yell from the sidelines too much because nobody listens. You know, the only people who will listen to you are other people on the sideline who don't need to hear it. So Christmas is not evil. Christmas is all about how you perceive it. It's so likewise, you can do the same analogy with a gun. Is a gun evil or not? It depends on the usage. The celebration of Christmas is a loving celebration. And for people to say it's evil is the focus on the consumerism and the overindulgence of things and the loss of the message of sharing. If you're going to keep saying that, it's not reality. It's your reality because of your perception. Other people don't understand what you're saying. So adopt it with action. Change it with action. Action's where you will, the only place you will change it. And the best way to do that is to influence the celebration in your way because change takes time and it will work and it, it, it will work it's as simple as that it will work if you do it that way if people are just mindlessly habitually buying things in your family sit down and meditate on each person and work out what they might need and it might even just be some choice words or something it might not be something you have to buy but if you keep saying that it's evil and it's this, and I had people commenting saying that the children celebrating Christmas and making the Christmas videos was wrong, and I was so agitated. I was like, so agitated because those are children enjoying themselves, making a video, making their own dance routine. You know, they're doing something they've seen me do using a video camera, very exciting for them. And People are saying it's wrong and it's evil because they've programmed their brain with a concept of what it might be, that it's an evil consumerist celebration. Again, you've programmed your own perception. Those children are doing nothing evil other than enjoy and love and play and sing. And God is most pleased when his children are at play, as the Bible says. And yet people are there pointing fingers. It's just insanity. Those children are not trying to get anyone to be consumers. They're not trying to get everyone to overindulge in chocolate or buy plastic brick or brick nobody needs. They're just saying, thank you, being creative. And at the same time, we're trying to provide for those children a loving home and a loving year ahead. And we do tap into the holiday that is wonderful and loving and giving. The same holiday that started Share Tanzania was Christmas when I tried to bring Christmas to children. And, and we do that with great effect because people are familiar with their celebration and we come into that celebration and we dare to say you know instead of buying yourself something share it with someone who's in much more need than you we raise the question do you really need all of this stuff or could you perhaps share it with with somebody in need and you know what people embrace it they aren't repulsed by it but what people are, and, and they change. Many people who I know have changed. They, they give their Christmas to the children, who I, I physically know these people now online for years. They give their consumerist Christmas to the children. They, they hand it over, they change. And they would never have changed from someone at the sideline screaming and shouting at them that the morons feeding into a satanic consumerism. You know, it's not the case. And Santa Claus is not Satan misspelled, same as God is not dog back to front, you know. I mean, our language is very new. It, it, it doesn't work like that. And Santa Claus just traces its history as Santa Claus, you know. And uh, it's all the depiction of a great saint, a great man who did great things to help children because he as a child had a memory of pain. Just when something beautiful is in front of you, try to look at it and find how you can be an energetic match to what's happening if you believe you should be able to change it. Then be an energetic match to it. Because if you've got parents trying to make their children happy and feeling full of love, even though they've been sidelined by advertising to go and buy this, that and the other, and you're telling them it's evil, you're not going to come across as sane to them. But if you go in and say, yeah, I've had Christmas, it's not my thing, because I think it's so consumerist and people really want to express their love, but they've been hooked by the system we live in and they feel they have to buy stuff to do that. And I think that's wrong. And in many instances, I think that even damages the, the whole meaning of love in a family.
people would listen to that. But they will not listen, listen to shouting. So that's my Christmas message. It's a message you can take all year round as well, I dare say. So, Merry Christmas, guys. God bless. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe as it really helps us to grow the channel and with it help more children here in Tanzania. Also, don't forget you can support our work by sharing with children in crisis here. Be it sharing for a particular need or even sharing one-on-one -on -one support for education, housing, food and medical care. It can be done for as little as the cost of a cup of coffee a week back in the West after all. Just visit www.sharetanzania.co.uk to find out more. Lastly, remember you can also support us via Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash feathers tail and help keep us here in Tanzania to continue our work. The links for the website and for the Patreon are in the description box of this video. Love and light guys, see you soon.